I'm going to keep this very short so we can let other people back into this room. You're of course welcome to come and talk to us afterwards, which would be a good idea because the panel, although unanimous, has somewhat different reasons for giving it the way we did. Um, I'll start with the good things, as we're supposed to. Uh, we felt that this debate had, in general, very good style. We thought it was very combative, and we thought that speakers were generally well prepared in terms of <coughs> having quotes and being stylistically ready for this debate. And that was really good. It's an important part of debating. Um, I'm just going to talk about four very brief points. The first one is the question of logic and point development. Under this, we have a variety of opinions from the education panel. But what it came down to was at the end of the day, the team that won slightly better fulfilled their burden of proof. We thought that throughout this debate, there was a lot of failures to fulfill your burden of proof, and that's going to be talked about later on a bit. But the team that did more and better rebuttal, and the team that was slightly better on the logic, eventually took this debate. The second thing I want to talk about is this idea of example-based debate. Examples are good, and we all know that. But if you have an example, and you use it to merely assert your point, and both teams, I assure you, are guilty of this, I will quote you specifics later when you talk to us. It doesn't make for very good debating because that's not the point of an example. The example is supposed to illustrate a point. And if you've heard Claire Ryan or any of the other senior degree debaters talk about it, they'll tell you that examples should be used as illustration, not as the bulk of an argument, which unfortunately in this debate, they often work. So there was also a generally poor usage of examples. Some examples we thought were just bad in this debate, but um, it's good that you had them to try to use them better. The third thing I want to talk about is this idea of whether or not this was a policy debate. And we think on this, the opposition really did drop the ball. It wasn't fair for them to harp on the idea of practical effects or whether this is a policy debate throughout their case. We didn't think it was helpful at all because this wasn't a policy debate. And I don't think the first proposition set it up to be. What the first proposition did do was set it up to be a debate where the practical effects of such a policy would be considered. And that's implied in the motion. We think both teams did that fine. There wasn't a problem with that actually being debated. We just don't think that there needed to be such a hoo-ha about whether or not uh, this was a policy debate or not. It detracted from real argumentation into kind of a mudslinging, uh, I didn't, yes you did, no I really didn't kind of fight. We're not interested in that. Okay. Uh, finally, I want to talk about responding to your opponents. And obviously this is very important in the debate. There was at least one instance in this debate where a speaker took two POIs and didn't respond to them adequately, even though he said he would. And throughout the debate, there was a problem with misrepresentation. And again, both sides have been specifically guilty of this at the several points, um, which is really problematic. Please listen to what the other side is saying and try not to uh, misread them in a manner favorable to you. Yes, that's good. That, that might win you a point, but if the judge catches it, we're not going to be particularly happy that you're rebutting a point which really didn't exist. So I invite you all to talk to us after this debate, and I'm going to conclude this by saying that by a very close but unanimous decision, this debate went to South Korea.